And you're watching BBC One. Welcome to It's Only TV But I Like It, the show that opens the time capsule of television, takes out some golden nuggets and sneakily slips Stan Boardman back in as a surprise <laughs> for future generations. <laughs> With Julian this week is Ian McGaskill, ladies and gentlemen. Hey. Hello, hey. Ian. Hey. Funny already. <laughs> Ian says when he put on weight, the viewers couldn't see Ireland. And when Anna Ford did the news in a short skirt, it was bye-bye Isle of Man. <laughs> <laughs> and on Julian's left, the smiling class from Hearsay. <laughs> if Myling could be anyone, apparently she wishes she could be the Queen for a day. But I'm sure not as much as Prince Philip wishes that Myling could be Queen for a day. <laughs> <laughs> when Myling was just 16, she first took up the harp. Coincidentally, that's the same year that Julian took up his first oboe. <laughs> I did study the organ. <laughs> With Phil this week is Lucy Speed. <laughs> of course, Lucy plays Natalie on the most important and popular show in the country. She also does impressions of the other EastEnders. She <laughs> would do her Pat Butcher for us, but she's forgotten to bring her pipe tobacco along. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the one you do uh, best, do you think? Sharon. Yeah, do that so one. A bit of Sharon. Sharon. Okay. Um... Gran. Never what? <laughs> Completing the lineup tonight is Richard Blackwood, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Earlier this year, Richard met Buffy the Vampire Slayer. More of the same tonight. Richard, meet Jupiter the Buffet Slayer. <laughs> <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, these are our teams. Okay, our first round tonight is TV Trivia, where we give the teams three clues to an infamous moment of telly history. Phil's team, I'd like you to go first. What do you think links these three clips? Why the hell, on an exercise, have we got a hairspray? That's ten press-ups. Down! Up! Watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic, watch us wreck the mic. Psych! Let's get ready to rumble! See that first clip where you've got that soldier shouting, uh, the sergeant shouting at, it's, it's a women recruits, wasn't it? It's yeah. a women's army for seven days in every month, the most lethal fighting force in the world. <laughs> <laughs> the week before that, you know, a bit weepy, like a lot of chocolate, <laughs> don't send them in a battle. <laughs> I, I actually was very interested in the PJ and Duncan thing. Can, can, can we play that? Yeah. That, you want to see it just, again? I just, yeah, just for me. Sorry. <laughs> can we do that, that bit where he was going to rumble like, like that? <laughs> I just want to know which hood he grew up in. Like, <laughs> like Brixton, yo, bro, what are you saying? <laughs> uh, 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 <laughs> They're close personal show business friends of mine, Anton Deck. Um, they? Yes. And um, invited me on his yacht. And uh, in fact, asked me to come on deck. <laughs> The last bit is uh, uh, Pat Butcher going through makeup. <laughs> 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 Take trolley her through and spray. Them. If I just go back to, um, I don't know if it's PJ or Duncan. There's a moment there where he's just. There's a moment where he's singing into the microphone. You see that there? That to me just says, you know, uh, hello, welcome to Burger King drive through <laughs> uh, um, Aunt, what will it be? Your pleasure up here? Extra. <laughs> Double what the? <laughs> Is there any Geordie people in the house? Do they go into a fight like that? <laughs> I dare say you'll find out. <laughs> is, it, is it something to do with, bi with Biker Grove and the... Uh... Were you a Biker Grove fan? No, not, not really, no. 
I, I caught, I caught glimpses of it. You were asked you to be on Biker Grove? I was asked to be on Biker Grove, man. And, and what, yeah, with and your you excellent Geordie accent. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you were like the Jamaican Biker Grove. Well, that's <laughs> why I was there. That's why I was going to be here. Help yourself, PJ Handonkan. That wasn't bad, was it? That was quite good. So, what do you think? Do you have a guess, though? They were, they were paintballing, and one of them got blinded at the end of the series. Yeah. Okay, so you think both, <laughs> you've been very specific, yeah. and you've done voices. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anything to add? Have you got any interesting observations? Well, that's all spray, isn't it? No, no I have no interesting observations. <laughs> <laughs> it's all sort of moderately obscene, isn't it? It's also a car ad in the right, isn't it? Yeah. What's obscene? No, no. I mean, I mean uh, spotting that lady dress there. I think that's unfair. She's a nice-looking lady there. I think she's got extraordinarily long arms, don't you? <laughs> long arms. Nothing wrong with that. No, 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 no. Just making <laughs> black conversation. <laughs> Ian, are you fully retired now, then? You're completely retired? Well, yeah, I'm busier than ever, of course, as they, as they all say, yes. It's lovely. I don't get up at three in the morning, do you? <laughs> no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you, you said... <laughs> this grove. And you said, come on a yacht. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look. <laughs> Not! Not it! Now. Ah! 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 Now that's stirring stuff. <laughs> was that pretty much what it was like on the yacht? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I once woke up in the morning to the sound of the doorbell and it was the gas man and um, I went downstairs and opened the door and I thought he gave me a funny look and there it was, my lean <laughs> across my face. <laughs> been paintballing as well. Then, yeah, paintballing, you know? yes. You could call it that. <laughs> <laughs> Anton Deck hosted Pop Idol and as such are the men behind Will Young. Well, after Julian, of course. <laughs> 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 now, Julian Steen, what do you think connects these three clues? Hello. Today, a very painful experience for me at the hands of the Royal Marines. You can sample my suffering a bit later. First, the attachment of what are called thermocouples to various parts of the body. These take the man's temperature and show how his body is reacting to the arctic cold of the chamber. Is there something not right with that man? <laughs> <laughs> it's John Leslie or the guy at the end? Is there a, a hole in his chest? <laughs> is that some sort of extra orifice going on? <laughs> <laughs> you perked up all of a sudden, didn't <laughs> you? <yeah. laughs> the rubber gloves bit, I'm reliably informed, is from Jim will fix it. Okay. That little boy had an overwhelming desire to see how rubber gloves are made. Oh, no. <laughs> there was a lovely image at the uh, glove making factory. We just see all the gloves. Now, you see that? That is actually uh, young. Uh, Prince Harry, and that is a royal um, greeting training machine. <laughs> and he just says, yes, lovely to meet you. Really? Oh, you're poor. Marvellous. And what do you do? <laughs> you can't really believe that some little kid rolled in and said, I'd like to see how they make marriage. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, but you do, you do that. You aim low and you get on. You see, if you go, I want a big king for the day and drive a rocket to the moon, Jim, oh, we can't do that. But if some little <laughs> twit goes, oh, go to a club factory, they can do that. <laughs> Is it something to do with um, this morning that he does now? Yeah, you, well, I can't say you're warm, but you're warm. <laughs> Ian, you, you must. Well, you're, you're retired uh, uh, now. Uh, you, must, you must be one of the people who watch this morning. It's aimed at yeah, people I, who yeah, sit around I, all day. I know, I know. Yeah, and you need the electrodes. I've done morning television. You do need the electrodes. <laughs> <laughs> you need that. Making yourself up. No, no, at four in the morning. No, no. What was, was that meant to be there? That was, <laughs> you were making yourself up with a was making up. Up. <laughs> yes, uh, yeah. We don't have pretty young girls in the morning Thank making you. up. You do your own stuff. It's, it's cruel. It really is. <laughs> Would that have been one of the perks of the job the for the only, later the, sessions? The though? only perk, uh, apart from meeting Michael Fish's wife. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs>
Michael Fisher's wife, she's a bit... She, she's very interested, yes. <laughs> <laughs> so you, you don't really know, then? Uh, frankly, no. no. Well, no. Has he had an incident, maybe? You know how they have, like, Dr Chris on? Mm -hmm. to, yeah? Well, on maybe. My keep, keep going. Oh. I'm, just, I'm just looking at you. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Keep talking, because this gives me the perfect excuse to keep staring. <laughs> right. I reckon that Dr Chris maybe did, like, some kind of experiment or something. <laughs> Close? No. Tell me more. <laughs> this must happen to you an awful lot, I imagine. Um, no, not really, actually. Not really. But what do guys say? If guys come up, what's the kind of obvious line that they would come up to you with that you just know, no, I'm not interested? Actually, um, I don't know. I've had a funny one where this, this guy's granddad was trying to set me up with his grandson. This someone's granddad was trying yeah, to set you up? Yeah, he said, look, love, I heard you haven't got a boyfriend. This guy's rich. He's got to work on his tummy, but you can help him with that. And that was it. And I was just really surprised. That's not going to be the best offer you've ever had, is it? <laughs> so, Phil, your granddad went yeah. to her. Yeah. <laughs> So what do you think? Do you have a guess, though? No, I Not really. Something on this morning, this morning. and with, with the doctor, because rubber gloves are involved. Well, that's what they said already. All right, no. OK, uh, you know, no-one's really given me that specific an answer. You're in the white area. Let's just have a look at, actually, what we're getting at. Here we go. We're going into Zoom. Take a closer look, job. Just a bit closer. <laughs> that's it. <I> Not <laughs> too close. <laughs> <laughs> What's exactly the same system, basically? John, if you're going to be handling my fiancé's uh, backside, <laughs> I'm going to have to insist that you wear these. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, we're getting a I boyfriend. Either that or, or oven gloves. <laughs> How are you? Oh, thank you, Vic. Oh. Going to be the one. Yeah, I think okay. you should. Yeah. Vic, thank, thank you very you. much. Thank, thank you. You're right at the right time. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> we're going to have He's fun a tonight. Good man. <laughs> Yes, it is the time on this morning when a chivalrous Rick Reeves leapt to the defence of his girlfriend's ass. <laughs> John Leslie went to the same primary school as Sean Connery. In fact, the school are so proud it now has a plaque up saying, Sean Connery went here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, you, you didn't get it, but I'm going to give you one point for being in the right region, OK? So at the end of that round, I see that Julian's team have just the one point. Phil's team in the lead with three points. <laughs> Our next round makes a welcome return from series one. It's called Here's One I Made Earlier and takes its inspiration from the famous Blue Peter Makes. The teams have been given the exact ingredients of a Blue Peter concoction, but what did Diane Louise Jordan make with them? The ingredients they have are four paper plates, grit, a margarine tub, a loo roll, some paper fasteners, some drinking straws, some sticky tape, glue, cocktail stick, sticky back plastic, of course, drinks bottle lid and an egg carton. OK, guys, what do you think was uh, concocted out of that? I don't know. I was... But we haven't got the grit. You didn't get any grit? No. Actually, what... let me have a look. You got the grit? They gave you the grit. I think grit. it's, um... All brand. We think it Sorry. is, yes. I, I know it's all brand. Well, I'm sure Ian would know. Ian, is it all brand? It is all brand. <laughs> <laughs> no, not all. They give us a plate. You can share. Can we share okay. it? Okay. Kids. Mm -hmm. It's Petra's ashes, I think. No. <laughs> it is all brand. It is all brand. Of a sort. Don't pull that face. It's a perfectly nice breakfast cereal, I'm sure. Yeah, but not when it's been lying around a studio for an half an hour waiting for us to dick around with it, is it? <laughs> Milk, a bit of sugar, a couple of raisins, bananas. You don't serve it under these circumstances. What kind of all-brown eater are you? A paper plate under the hot lights, licking it up like some kind of deranged peasant? I bet, I bet if we left you there you got hungry enough, you'd be very grateful for that. <laughs> OK, so, Julian, you guys have come up with something you think it conceivably might have been, yeah? Yes, I thought maybe it was something to do with the Silver Jubilee. Mm -hmm. And um, a novelty... Oops. Cake stands. Oh, well, you know what? That's not bad. I mean, that's the, the kind of thing um, they make. Can I interest you in a French fancy? It's lovely, isn't it? Yeah. How delightful. Mm. What about you? I'll have a pineapple on the stick. Thank you. How common? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> you, see, you see? You see the chemistry? <laughs> yeah. Phil and uh, yeah? team, what did you come uh, up well, with? Well, we came problem. up with this. Uh, <laughs> It's actually an action man with breasts and they shave the beard really off. Who did you like? One of the other five contestants. There's one in Liberty X. Oh. I don't know her name. I think it might oh, be yeah, Jessica. Oh, yeah, I saw her yesterday. Yeah. Are you a Liberty X fan, Richard? I you was sitting me, next so. to them yesterday. I was at an uh, audience with Lulu. Man, you lead the life, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> what were you doing at an audience with Lulu? Lulu is hip. 
She got through to the brothers a couple of times. She was we, very we, big we, in the Lulu. She had a big black following. <laughs> she had a big black following. Shout was a big tune. Shout was not. If the brothers, brothers, put your hands up. One. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I put, it was plural. Brother. <laughs> you know, I've just realised he looks disappointed. He thought he was going to an audience with Lulu. <laughs> He's got let's, it. Let's show him. You know about Lulu. Yes. Tell me another song by Lulu. Okay, you see? <laughs> So, um, there you go. That's lovely. I like this. I'm going to keep this. If I'm right. Right. What we did was we, we thought we designed this lovely Russian tank <laughs> with its oh, spikes. Ah, it's ah. The you see, use the edges. You cut edges. them up and use the edges to fashion They've the They've been used. They've been used. And the grid. And the grid is, is the dirt that is, that is camouflage. Yeah. It's camouflage on the side of the tank, and, and the studs on the top here. And you've got the a straw lovely, there. You've give a lovely kind of ready for the nightclub look. And it's a beautiful Soviet red. Isn't it though? Okay. All right. Well, you won't be surprised to know that isn't actually what she made, I'm sure. Um, let's see what Diane actually concocted. Easter Sunday is a time when lots of people give each other Easter eggs. And it's also a time when fun fairs appear all over the country. So how about decorating your Easter day breakfast, lunch or tea table with an Easter egg carousel? You were closer. I'm going to give you the two points because oh, I think you got pretty close. Yeah. I wouldn't go so far as that. Don't get cockshot. <laughs> two points to you. I'm going to give you nothing to say. That's an insult. It was, of course, an Easter egg carousel. And the following week, Diane showed Mum and Dad how to make a thanks for nothing card. <laughs> Okay, so at the end of that round, I've given you two points. That gives you a total of three, which brings you neck to neck with Phil's team. We'll also have three, so congratulations. <laughs> Before we get to round three, which is Channel Hubbing, Richard, you're, you're, you're keen to make it in Hollywood now, aren't you? You've got your eyes set on Hollywood. I know yeah. you've been out there. Is it true you met Brittany? Yes, I did. And all of her entourage. It was really nice. People say she's got big thighs. <laughs> she, she's got, well, black people love big thighs. You know, we like the whole shape thing, something to hold on to. to Jonathan, behind. the man craves booty. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're in jail with me and Phil, <laughs> it would be Phil, you woke early in the morning first. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? I'm doing my victory dance. He wants <laughs> me, not you. I think you're getting ready to rumble. <laughs> Ready for crumble? Have we got any grass? <laughs> Let's get ready for crumble. <laughs> oh, oh. I apologise, Mylene. Mylene, do you like strong black men? I like strong black... I haven't met any. Got him, got him, in Venice, I have gone off, sort of, built have men. You? Mm. I think men should have a little bit of a belly. Something that you yes! can hold of. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I'm relaxing it now. I'll be <laughs> I'm letting it go. I'm going to go and take my support knickers off. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, uh, round three is channel hopping, where our guests have 90 seconds to act out clues to five TV themes for our team captains. Lucy and Richard, I'd like you to go first, if you don't mind for Phil. Uh, if you'd like to go around the back and assume the position. Phil, I'm going to ask you to please don these highly amusing earmuffs. Hey. Uh, yes. <laughs> we'll put them on and then people can try and guess what you're meant to be. You know, I think I've got a rough idea. You look like a child hiding in a carpet warehouse. <laughs> am, I, um, am I thingy, the big red dog? Doodles from the Tweenies. I see we have a lot of Tweenies fans in town. <laughs> OK, and here's your uh, remote control. OK, begin channel hopping. <laughs> the, the br oh! Brothers, dummies, toddlers, brothers in nappies, the, the monks, baby monks, the church. Don't worry, Richard, your credibility is intact. T t nappy, pin, sex in the monastery. I have no idea what they're doing. Oh, uh, bless this house. Big hand, big number one. The big hand, no? It's all there for you. The big, big finger hold. It's not fun. <laughs> Rich is working it. Look at that. No.
just want Kelly. Open all hours. Open all hours. Oh, God. <laughs> Carve, carving, uh, hammer, chisel, face, yeah. face, changing faces, ch changing faces. Done. Lucy, good work. Richard, good work. I can't help but think that your captain let you both down. You've got two out of five, and oh, frankly, well. I think you owe them both an apology. I'm very sorry. Julian, your guys around the back ready to go. I'm going to ask you now to put on your very amusing earmuffs. We're sticking with the tweeny theme. <laughs> <laughs> Let's have a look then. Let me have a look profile. I'm Spartacus. <laughs> I'm going to give you the remote control. Let's begin channel hopping. Um, <laughs> that's terrifying. Caveman, is that? Planets. Look at him. Planet Ape. No. <laughs> Planet Ape like. Sad old bastard. <laughs> no, I don't know. Have a rest. Good work. <laughs> Which is that it? Um, School teachers. Teachers. Yes, good work. Uh, is it? It's only TV, but I like. No, it's all there for you. Uh, Time for Time Teletubbies. Yes, Teletubbies. Teletubbies. Well done, good work. Gladiators. British. Yeah. British. Keep doing that, Mylene. Go on. <laughs> Ian, get out of the way. <laughs> I don't know. Crying at the grave. Empty isn't something not. No, not empty. No, go back to it. You still need. Ah, oh, you had a time. Well done. Yeah. What was the bag? Yeah. Miley, well done. Ian, good work. You've got two out of five. You're not no, no are you? Ian? No, no. <laughs> Have you ever done the acting? Uh, only pantomime. Right. Oh, really? Who are you in panto with? Um, Rod Hull. <laughs> oh, well, thanks for bringing us all no, down. No. <laughs> Yeah. Next time someone asks, at least make up a living name, will you? <laughs> <laughs> <Sagi. Well>, the... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, at the end of that round, uh, you, you both did okay. You got two points as well, so it means you're equal once again with five points each. Hey. Our next round tonight is called Bad News. We'll show the teams a dramatic moment from telly where the action is interrupted by some bad news. This week, they must work out what calamity has befallen international rescue. Oh. Hey, what's up, kiddo? I'm poop, that's what's up. Why, Grandma? Grandma, what's the matter? Where do we start with Grandma? <laughs> Nice to see um, Callisti Kendall still working. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what the bad news is, and I don't particularly care. Do you? <laughs> Miley, you don't even remember Thunderbirds, do you? I imagine. I didn't watch it. No. When you were a little, what was on TV? What shows did you watch? Um, Rainbow. Rainbow. Mm. Muffin the Mule. I remember this. <laughs> no, I'm not asking um, what she did in her spare time. Exactly. <laughs> Muffin the Mule, that's going yeah, back exactly. to that, wasn't it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. What do you mean, war? You can't go war about Muffin the Mule. <laughs> it was, it was a puppet donkey. It was, it was all there was. It was there was nothing else. That so was, is that what you used to think about? I'm afraid so, yeah. yeah. It explains a lot. Really. It does, doesn't it? <laughs> oh, Mrs. Fish, she's got less of a treat coming than she thought. 
I had to dress up as a donkey and clock round the bedroom for half an hour. All right, so you know it's bad news, but you, you don't even want to hazard a guess. Maybe something happened in the kitchen. What do you think might have happened in the kitchen? Has someone been poisoned? All right, OK, well, that's... A bit uh, unlikely. I'll, I'll accept that as your, your guess. Okay. She's poisoned someone inadvertently. OK, guys, what do you think? I think uh, the bad news is she's still got Grandad's testicles in her cheeks. <laughs> Bad I news. think she burnt something in the oven. What do you think it would have been? What would she have been cooking? Pie. Well, the, the, yeah, wood. <laughs> what's she going to cook? She... Wood? Well, it'd be made of wood. It would be wood pie, wouldn't it? What do you reckon it's going to be? Real food? How much wood pie would a wood puppet need? You're <laughs> <laughs> getting a bit too deep, bro. It's just a programme. Let it go. <laughs> I reckon it's a wood pie that blew up in the kitchen. You know, both of those guesses, I think, would have made a thrilling instalment of Thunderbirds. Let's see, actually, what it was. Why, Grandma? Grandma, what's the matter? Oh, dear. I've lost my personal edible transmitter. I remember seeing it on the kitchen shelf while I was fixing the apple pie for lunch, but now... Oh, dear, it's gone. And one of us has eaten it. Is that what you're trying to say, Grandma? I did mention pie. She said pie. Richard, she's not upset that someone's eating her pie. She's happy they're eating the pie. I'm trying to claim some points, bro. Give me something. I'm saying pie. You're not getting any points. You're cold, bro. That's and cold. You, you carry on, you're going to lose a point. <laughs> You're taking it a bit too deep. Let it go. You're that close. All right. <laughs> the bad news is that someone's eaten Granny's edible transmitter. A live-action Thunderbirds movie is planned with Liz Hurley tipped to play Lady Penelope. Blimey, if they can find a way of making her less wooden, she'll be perfect for the part, <laughs> wouldn't she? <laughs> were you a Thunderbirds fan of him? I was, yeah. You were? Yeah. Were you a fan of Hearsay, the pop band? Uh, uh, no, not, not, I missed out there. Were you upset when Kim Marsh left the band? I was, but I, I was, I, I never heard of them, but, uh, if, uh, if you... <laughs> <laughs> if you say so. So we come to our final <laughs> round, ladies and gentlemen, with the scores neck and neck at five and five. This is, of course, our fingers on the buzzer race to the finish to test the teams on all things telly. Here we go, first question. In Bagpuss, how did Emily wake up Bagpuss? <laughs> Phil. She gave him a quick blast on the mouse organ. <laughs> Good answer, not the right one. Junior. Did she pull his fair balls? <laughs> no, it was with a magical spell. Uh, Bruce Forsyth is on your screens right now. There, complete this catchphrase of his. I'm the leader of the pack, which makes me such a lucky jack. Here they are, so appealing. Okay, dollies. Phil, with a real slim shady. Please stand up. Please stand up. <laughs> I might have heard that. Richard. Do your dealing. Do your dealing. It was. Point to you. What TV two make up this celebrity freak? No. <laughs> Ruby Wax and Dot Cotton. Yeah, but it's hard to tell which one is which, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Complete this TV phrase. In every generation, right. there is a chosen one. She will stand against the vampires, the demons, and the forces of darkness. She is... <laughs> Floella Benjamin. <laughs> chosen one? It is the chosen one, Myling. Good work there, you see. Uh, what are the names of Andy Pandy's two friends? <laughs> Phil. Lawrence Llewellyn Bone and Carol Smile. <laughs> Wrong Andy. Andy. Oopy Lou. Yep. And little bear? Teddy. I'm going to give you a point each. It's Loopy Ooh. Lou and Teddy it was. Complete this TV phrase, Robin Hood, Robin Hood, riding through the glen. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, with his band of men. Just count me in. <laughs> <laughs> I could see you in a hat with a fella. Feared by the bad, loved by the good. Robin Hood, Robin Hood, Robin Hood. Yeah. That's right. Well done. Another celebrity freak on your screens right now. Name this TV too. No, that's horrible. <laughs> that is just horrible. <laughs> Julian, who do you think well, you're in first? Chris Evans on the right. Is that not yeah. Is it? Is it? Is. You're right, and let's pray that never ever happens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're at the end of the round. Thank goodness for that. That brings the end of the show, and the final scores are Julian's team. You have eight points. Phil Seam, you're this week's winners with nine points. <laughs> it was close. Well done. <laughs> we leave you with the clip of Michelle Collins on Blue Peter, which was the only time in the show's history that they actually demanded the badge back. Enjoy this. Good night. Thanks for watching. <laughs>